So I would like to hear from you, of course, because in the end of the day, the barcode or the barcode, as you separate words, mostly it was the inception of everything about data. So what you call right now big data, and actually in the one day even AI, because in the end of the day, is it was a processment of representation of data in a visual way, in a machine readable form, which is partly what AI is doing right now, so in, in, in different ways. So uh, I would like to hear from you, and I think it's a privilege, but I'll, as as the creator, of course, uh, that you work, of course, with, uh, with uh, uh, Bernard Silver, and of course, with your team. So can you describe for people listening to us, um, uh, as an engineer, as the inventor, how do you define the barcode? Because I would love to hear it from you. Yeah, the, the barcode, uh, you know, the, the job I had at first, when I first joined IBM, they asked me to build a scanner, scanning. And uh, I had to scan uh, optical things. And so they were photographs on images on uh, photographic paper and uh, or photographic film film paper and uh, even things like Calvar, which is developed by heat. And um, so I worked in a lab for years, you know, with no lights. Because you couldn't have any light in there and get the scanners to work. And uh, I was uh, the CIA subcontracted uh, us uh, the, the requirement to build uh, or to 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 be able to read uh, and make very small marks, like you could put on the head of a pin. If you remember James Bond and the guy named Q that built all his special stuff, uh, well, uh, that's what I was reading: is uh, itty bitty little things that you couldn't see even with a magnifying glass that would fit on the head of a pin. And uh, so we went through uh, all of those uh, scanning things and. Uh, it was uh, it was it was really uh, amazing, and um, so uh, then when uh, we needed item identification, I kind of went back to thinking about uh, our scanning and uh, uh, what what we had done, and uh, so you know that you can shine a light spot of light and move that spot of light across uh, a bar. And if a black bar and then a white space, another black bar, people had done that many times for years before. I mean, we can go back to Morse code and so on and so forth. And then a fellow who later joined my team, Joe Woodland, came up in 1948 with the idea for uh, scanning in supermarket and well defined what the supermarket could do and came up with a code, in fact. But his code it uh, it didn't work reliably enough to ever make it in the supermarket world, in my opinion. But uh, it was easy to scan because it was a bullseye code. It was a circular code. And uh, so you don't have to orient it. Whereas uh, if you have just plain bars and you had only a single line scan, you would have to orient it so that the line would go perpendicularly through the bars. But his code had a lot of disadvantages. The first and worst was that he measured the width of a bar, a black bar, to the width of the white space next to it. And as I pointed out earlier in our conversation, one of the real problems was getting reliability early on when the printing was very poor quality. We had very inexpensive printers that had to print at high speed in the store. And they did two things. They caused blurring along one of the edges, whichever was the direction of the motion of the paper through the printer, because they had to be in-store cheap printers. And the second one was the printer had either too much ink or not enough ink uh, oftentimes. And if it had too much ink, it would make one black bar, all the black bars fatter. Well, if all the black bars got fatter, guess what happened to the white spaces? They all got skinnier. And so what Woodland was doing was measuring the width of the bar and comparing it to the width of the space next to it. Um, and as I point out in our in the appendix and elsewhere in the book, we realized that you, you just get terrible uh, error uh, rates when you do that. And you can't have terrible error rates because, you know, there's uh, people lose confidence and they wouldn't have gone forward with the program. And so what we decided to do is we measure the leading edge of one of those black bars to the leading edge of the next black bar. The left edges of all the bars move to the left. But the right edge of the bars uh, also moves to the right. 
but we're measuring the left edge to the left edge of the next bar. Both move to the left the same amount, and the trailing edge also moves the same amount. So the errors cancel instead of add together. And that's one of the reasons why our code uh, works so much better. The other thing was you can line the code up so that the bars go through the printer with the top edges in the direction of motion. And that's where the blur is, but you don't use the top edge to read uh, the code. You pull a line of light across the uh, length of the bar on that, that edge, and so it goes away. So uh, the errors uh, worked a lot better, and that's what we did. And of course, in order to avoid, uh, if you have a regular barcode uh, with just vertical bars like we have, then you would think you have to orient it. And we couldn't take the time or require the time of the operator to orient the code, uh, twist the package until they had it perpendicular. So we scanned with an X scan, which we created by vibrating mirrors. Uh, with uh, created what the mathematicians call a Lizajou pattern. And uh, it's a it's an X pattern right at the center, and it's very linear. Uh, that is to say, the lines of the X are very linear. And uh, so we got that for free by uh, vibrating two mirrors and getting the light to go in the form of an X. And because the light is in the form of an X, uh, it will go across all of, one of the ones will go across all of the bars if the bars are taller than they are wide, but they have to be taller than they are wide uh, or else they won't go through all the bars. And then if you look at the barcode, you'll see that if it's a regular barcode with four or five, five numbers on the left and five numbers on the right at the bottom, it's actually wider than it is tall, not taller than it is wide. And, uh, so what we had to recognize is in order to make it small enough, uh, we had to make it the way you see it there. And so what we did, one of the guys and the member of the team came up with this idea, and that is, well, we'll just read the left half and the right half separately. We'll put a couple divider lines. You'll see there's three light divider lines in the middle. And that way we can tell whether we're reading the left-hand side or the right-hand side. In fact, you can even tell if you look at a barcode, if you see a number on the left side and another number on the right side, you look above it, the bars are different. That's because the left and the right side are encoded separately and differently. And so the scanner might get the right side first or the left side first, it doesn't matter, but it can tell, okay, this encoding is a right side coding, that encoding is a left side coding. Then I will put the two of them together in this little PC-like thing we have on the desk of the check stand and figure out which one was which. And uh, we do all that electronically and uh, bingo, uh, we get a small uh, label, a small barcode that's very reliable, uh, has almost no misreads, even though it, it's blocked up. It even has error correction. You know, if, 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 if one of the digits is totally blocked, the bars on it, um, it, it can still read the others and it can calculate what the, th what the last one should have been and correct it and change it. Uh, that's known technology in, uh, in, in the field of communications engineering. So we do that. So, so to me, it's a, it's a barcode that's uh, very reliable, simple, easy to print, cheap to print, and extremely reliable to read because of the, the techniques of reading that we put into it. That's amazing. Uh, all these details and as well, how this is still impacting us after 50 years. Yeah.